Reddington with the uh, Subaroonies. Thanks, man. Dude, three months in a row? Dude, what? Have we been doing this three months already? Oh, I'm confused. Thanks, man. So much love for you. Thanks, dude. Sculpting some rocks. Oh, man. Alright, so look at this wall piece. This one's not familiar at all. Uh, what am I going to do today? I think... Dang, I thought I, uh, oh, did I actually write over it? Let me see here. So, I've been playing in, uh, Unity. Just to test some, some of their new shader stuff out. Nom, 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 nom. Um, it's this from this thing here. It's so messy. Ignore that. We need to get the empire going. Got to jumpstart that baby. Uh, yeah, so just playing with Unity a little bit. I'm going to use this actually for my uh, test uh, to see what to do about... Um, remember how we're going to map the, the trim texture stuff in here? even though this has its own UV set. So I'm gonna try and do that today so I can at least show like the start of it. And yeah. Anywho, how you guys doing? Happy, uh, happy Monday. Toltec, what's up, man? What's good? Dude, sculpting rocks. I love sculpting me some rocks. They're fun. Okay, I need to see if I can find the, uh, the other. I'm just going to leave this up while I'm looking through the UV sets. Very, very lazy day today. Ah, oh, it's totally fine, man. It's fine to have those every once in a while. You need them. You need them for the uh, creative uh, recuperation. You know what I mean? Not same, not same. Is it? Let's see if it's this one. Nope, there's only one UV set in there. That sucks. Doing fine besides getting my 10th art test results. Result rejection. But I did light a fire under my ass. Oh no, no problem, man. You can bug, you can bug all of us. That's the goal of the Discord, you know. What's up, Phoenix? How you doing? All right. Well, I guess we need to um, figure out this whole UV thing again, um, which isn't too difficult because it's a low poly already. Let's um, is it wall stack? Wall stack one low. What's this one? Whoa! Whoa! Fine, dude. That's the first thing. Oh no! Here it is. I was like, the moto crash. That was weird. Yeah, dude. Money bags, blue. I couldn't believe it. My brain like liquefied. <laughs> oh, I just realized there's no uh, music action going on. There we go. Shaw, what's going on? Okay, so we got UV1 and UV2. So if I double click UVs, UV1 or UV0, this is the unique UV set. UV1 is mapped to uh, this texture that you see here. Let's 
move this over here. So the idea is that um, all the details that I'm modeling, we can place in these, in this texture space. Oh, that's weird. There's like UDIMs are on. That's gonna, okay. Why are UDIMs on? They're not in here. Interesting. Okay, so you can see we've mapped all that stuff. Uh, let's see if we can find the image. So this is the texture that we're going to UV our trims to. So like the, I think I'll do this so you can see the, so they tile left to right on these ones and then these ones are just zero to one kind of map spaces. So let's see if we can do like a little example of a, of a piece that would work for that. So maybe like, um, Maybe this trim here, we'll do the uh, the flowers and the leaves. So we'll get that set up. And then I'll set up the shader so that the two normals blend together and you can see how that works. That should pro that'll probably take the whole stream. But it's all good. Gotta get that stuff set up anyways. Beautiful hand painted textures, dude. Look at the arrows and shit everywhere. So good. So good. So, trim shapes. There we is. Okay, so if we look in the front here, let's um, Trying to clean this up a bit, but essentially what we want to do is get this bottom piece here. Hey, what's up, Morgan? How you doing? Oops. Okay, so we got our back piece here. What we need is a uh, a square. sure it's it's on the grid let's do that there we go okay so this is square uh, if we go to the UVs those are square right so it takes up the zero to one space uh, edge to edge. If we, um, I need to locate the texture wherever that's at. It's, I think it's in this one. Trim block out under texture PSD. I keep changing the UIs. Okay. So block out material. Let's add an image.
Wrong emoji. English keyboard. What? <laughs> ah, yo. How you doing, Tobias? What? Where is the... Where is that image saved? The PSD. Oh man, that's hilarious. I'm like, where the hell is this thing? Skull Reaper, how you doing, man? What's good? Oh, there it is. It's totally in not the folder it should be in. That's why it was hard to find. Okay, so the idea is we take this information and make sure it's on the grid. I should probably turn the smoothing off on that. Oh, that's weird. That's this stuff is really choppy for some reason. Let's do a um, let's do a cleanup if we can. I don't know if merge vertices is gonna break stuff. There's stuff that's really close together. So what I'm uh, Toltec, what I'm working on. What's up, Junglist? Uh, I am working on the getting a bake for the tileable tileable textures. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm mapping mapping these out to these these spaces that I've kind of arbitrarily blocked out. really choppy though for some reason on that geo it's kind of annoying okay so that's actually I think we're gonna need to lower it here a bit we're gonna need to add some cuts I don't need to be perfect but close Okay, so that's that section. Essentially, I'm going to make this strip tile just so we can test out the 
the details. Grab this bottom piece here. Okay. So that fits. Now this one, for example. So this is kind of a an old school trick. Let me get rid of these. So if you grab these ones, right, and you position them. So they're right on that, right on that seam. As long as nothing else crosses this threshold, this edge here, you can get it to. Uh, <laughs> reads <gasps> what? Uh, as long as you get this edge kind of covered up, uh, basically this will be seamless. I'll show you what, what I mean here in a second. I'll just smooth these guys. You talking about the slip UVs reads? This is a weird ass song. Not really down. <laughs> yeah, I usually uh, add that to just like a a thing that you can um, toggle on and off. What we got here, Pick Jewel. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the uh, the Empire. Hope all is well with you this fine Monday evening. I don't know if it's evening for you, but you know. You know what I mean. You're no longer sub to me. I noticed that. <laughs> I don't think... Uh you you probably shouldn't have uh, donated it so much so that you could just use some of that money for the sub <laughs> dude I still can't believe you did that man thanks a lot dude so see this one this one doesn't actually visibly pass the threshold like you don't end up seeing it so we can actually remove that uh, this can probably do something like that so basically we're just we're just trying to cover up the what's happening here the edge I'm going to go with this view. getting a little hardcore at this. I don't think you need to get this crazy. No, oh, it's time to make a folder. Next time you'll donate 10k. Jesus Christ. Why? Well, I, I mean, like the only the only thing that kind of sucks, I think, for you is uh, that you don't get to 
Well, I guess you're a mod, so it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really matter. You're still in the uh, the sub channel, right? So I guess that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, so you see how this is all here now? This is all on the edge. So as long as uh, let me make sure this is low poly. Uh, if I duplicate this and then use this corner vert as the tile edge and then snap to the next one this is now technically tiling so anything that happens inside between these two points will work and the bake will be yeah you got to be able to reddington you got to be able to moderate all channels right hey what's up leon how you doing So now what we can do is just kind of start filling in the gaps. Let's see what we're missing here. Junglist. The other thing I want to be careful of is uh, pieces that are going to go outside of the, the trim. Let's move that into place there, like this guy. So I probably don't need to get too perfect with this. Actually, now that I say that, I'm just going to... I'm going to just smash all this together because I, I still need to redo the leaves and stuff and like actually get them instanced nicely so that we can update them accordingly. So let's, uh, let's just grab all this. Let's put it up here. And then let's we'll get rid of this guy. Oh yeah, here's that problem I was talking about uh, in the other stream. Like what happens when you subdivide half of your scene and the other half is not? Like are you able to like, like how do you sort through that? We just need to select some stuff in here. Dupe that here. I'm like, uh, sure. This looks fine. The other shitty parts I'm gonna have to bake, and I haven't baked a moto in a little while, so this might get a little bumpy. Okay, so technically that geometry is tiling. Oh man, Leon. I'm so sorry, man. Uh, Skull Reaper. Skull Reaper. No, uh, I'm using a little bit of reference from um, some temples. But uh, what I'm doing right now is just more of like uh, the process, right? I'm trying to get the... Trying to get that all down. Okay, so let's let's see what happens if I just uh, I haven't used this. So there's a bake normals current UV set. Let's see what happens. Then a little bit, I'll show you the um, the scene I'm working on. I guess so you have some context. 
or if you go to uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, I think this link works. Yeah, if you go to that link, you can see all of the stuff I've been doing. I don't think this is gonna work. Nope, that's cool. A year long project, dude, there's, I don't even think I'll ever get this done. It's just like stuff so that I can test things and show you guys processes and such. Keep it focused on the arts, nice. What's up, Chaos? Darklin? Robomega, dude. Or is it Robbie? Robbie Omega. How you doing, man? Thanks for tuning in live. Live you get music. Okay. I guess we need to set this up for baking. I'm totally not comfortable with this. Let's stumble. think this is gonna work first time oh what the hell did I just do that first time triple-a filter on what <laughs> what do you mean what do you mean triple-a filter that's so funny <laughs> that triple A filter. Oh, I forgot that one. Anyways, this will be good because uh, we'll be able to test this this thing. Creatures, what's going on? Humiliation, dude. What's up, man? How you doing? Okay, brain, brain, come on, brain. What do you? What's happening? So let's look at this. Okay, that looks yeah. So this is like an example of like one of the strips, right? So. You just think you, you map out each one of these with different patterns and stuff and you'd be good. Yeah, I need to look at the, uh, dude, it's the new like Moto Baker is pretty sick. I just need to understand how it works. Cause like you can just right click on a mesh now and then just be like, where's it at? Where's it at? Am I doing this right? Yeah. Do, 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 bake and then there's occlusion illumination normals displacement texture channels pretty cool the bake wizard uh so just help me out with the pipe if it's helpful for you moto peeps dude that's awesome can you post that in the uh, uh source resources in the discord
Tobias, by the way, we talked about expensive software at work today. Quickly, quickly came to the conclusion that Moto is far from worst. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so let's, we have this, so let's try, we'll name it correctly and then Okay, so so here's the uh, for people that are just kind of tuning in. This is the the low poly mesh with the uh, normals baked and the uh, smart material applied to the top of it. That's nice bake. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I'd like to say that I was able to do that, but uh, it just kind of happened. Pretty clean though. Channels probably need to be inverted for uh, reasons. Uh, the green channel. So this is me in Unity. I'm not usually working Unity, so this is going to be um, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Okay, so in this material, we've got material one and material two. And then I'm lurping between them using uh, these like masks that I stacked up. Uh, I do use the substance painter to bake. If it's a sculpting stuff, I usually do. For organic stuff, it's really good. Um, yeah, so this, this thing's a fucking mess right now, so. <laughs> Please ignore that. Uh, let's see here. Is a mutual decision, dude, that song. All right, brain, come on now. So we're gonna do a blend normal. Yeah, this is Amplify. So we're going to take... God, that is weird. Why is it doing that? I guess it needs another... Let me see what happens if I give it another normal. Yeah, it solves it. Okay. So it takes a blue channel from one of these. Okay, so let's go into textures. Since this trim texture sheet we'll be using a lot, I would probably just save it to this is kind of how I tend to navigate to the folders I usually hit new window from the folder up when I'm saving it's like the fastest way for me to navigate to where I'm trying to go let's drag this in here put that in there oh what am I doing I don't need to do that There we go. Okay, so this is one of those things that'll be used throughout. So we'll just put that over here. We get a texture coordinate. UV set two. So this will look at the UV set to of the material that uh, of the asset that the material is applied to. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> I haven't done this before, so in uh, oh yeah, cool. Okay, so you can see where it's mapped because it's not UV'd right now. That's holding up pretty well. That's cool. So what we're gonna do? is we're gonna move the UVs around and place that type of detail like down here. How long have I been uh, 
working in 3D uh, since 2000, 2005, something like that. I'm old. I'm old-ish. How about that? I'm old-ish. Okay, so let's go here. Oh, where are you at? It's this one. Okay, so this one's got the UV set up nicely. I think the material was called red. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it in the one that I had before. Okay, so this one should have, yeah. It's got three UV sets. Why is that? Okay, that's the one we're looking for is UV, UV1. So we got to delete this one so that this one would be, so Unity will look at this as UV1 and this one is UV2. I think Unreal looks at zero, starts at zero. With age comes wisdom. <laughs> Dude, I should be better by the amount of time that I've been doing this. Uh, Rasmus, actually. Um, if you look up Game Assembly, the portfolio is coming out of there. I'll do a quick shout out here. Game Assembly. It's a video game education, uh, video game production education uh, school. Without giving any numbers, a decent amount of our interns come from uh, Game Assembly uh, for their, it's part of their education. Uh, okay, so if we go to students, I'll drop this in. There you go. And then you scroll down, like let's see, Game Art 2017. No, maybe not. Game Art 2016. You're not going to give me anything? Why is that? Um, what? Interesting. Anyways, if you go in here, this exact area, these drop down and you can see all the portfolios of the game artists and game programming and level design of all students. Try it out. See if it works on your end. I'll post it again in chat. There you go. Yeah, it's a two-year program as well. Okay, so we've got two UV sets. I want to take this strip. And we'll save this out. And go back here. So I saved over this mesh. So I just need to locate and re-import. Whoa, whoa, what is that? Link works, but you can only see 2016. Ah, okay, cool. Good to know. Moss AO. Oh, nice. I was wondering why that wasn't working. I didn't have the AO plugged into this. I borked it. <laughs> but I need to I need to get this going. Why are the UVs not I wonder if I need to look at the shader again. Okay, so we got the blend happening. It's 
from this trim sheet. It's uh All right. Oh, that's going to bug me. Okay. Do you know if uh, you need to name these UV1 and UV2? I wonder if that's a thing. Oh, I just did re import all. Blah. Any chance I can get a Discord invite? Yeah, dude. Oh, you got it. Nightbot's got you. Or Reed's got you, and then Nightbot got your back all right well oh all right that's cool it says hold on I probably shouldn't have done that it's like re-importing everything Ooh, the song. No. It says hold on again. Sorry. Sorry. Rip. It makes me wonder if this is like even the one that it's looking at. That's so funny. You liked that song? Just kidding. Kappa. Man, there's some weird stuff starting to pop in here. I need to... Uh... Winter blanket? What's in here? It's starting to get, you know, it's starting to get cool. We can, we can switch to that. Man, it's full on re-importing everything. So it looks like this is going to work out pretty well. I just need to get the it reading the UVs and then we should be we should be good. I think they did have a are you sure button and I clicked it. <laughs> Uh, Woogie, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm re-importing all of Unity. <laughs> it's kind of like in Perforce when they've got the revert button right next to the uh, delete button. You're like, oh, I don't need to make changes to this file. And you say you say revert, but then you accidentally hit delete. And it's like, are you sure you want to revert? And are you sure you want to delete? They both look the same. And man, you can delete stuff super easily. <laughs> Is it Neville Yashka? 
How you doing? Welcome. All right. Well, this looks like it came back in, and the UVs are still the same. You mother. That's cool. That's that's really cool. Thanks. Okay. Well, we need to uh, solve this somehow. Yeah, so refreshing the file, somehow also I've got like a, like animation information in here. That shows how much I know Moto. The hell? Why did the environment go white? That's super weird. Oh, nice. Thanks, Windows. I think I know why now. That's cool. So, when you import stuff into Unity, it makes its own files. Cool. Okay, so let's just rename these back. If I save this one, that should update. It updated and the shader is wrong. Yeah, I probably have animation ticked in my FBX ex export. Oh God, what's happening? This is it's looking good guys, it's looking real good. Uh, how come I'm in Unity? Uh, I'm. I was trying something out and I figured just for the stream I would just be in here for today. Either way, I'm just testing out meshes so it doesn't really matter. Dude, doesn't that look awesome? I mean, come on. Like, how can you not, how can you not like this? <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Okay, so. Ah, what is the noises? Guy Virus, dude, thanks for the resub. Two months. Tune shaded. Dude, I don't even know why the environment in the background is like super bright right now. That's really weird. Oh. Look at that. So everything's doubled. That's super weird. That's supposed to be doubled. What? Oh, I'm weirded out now. Oh, I know why. Because the... This is another thing that's really weird about Unity is it imports all this stuff in here. There we go. So it's importing like all of the lighting information and, and shit. Cool. Well, I'm just gonna exit out of that. I think I broke Unity. <laughs> but yeah, I've been interested in Unity for a little while and uh, there's been some recent things I saw where I was like, what? Ever bridge between Unity and Moto? No. Oh, that's cool. So that's all jacked up still. <laughs> this is here. That's good. Okay. All right, Mesh. What's your deal? I'd probably go here too. Where you at? FBX. Save cameras, lights. Don't want to save materials. Save geometry. Don't save the animation. I have no idea why it's looking at like the wrong UV set now because I can see that it's looking at the UV set that's mapped 
to the uh, the new space. So I wonder if the shader has to explicitly be told everything. So like uh, the mask stuff, I wonder if that has to be told that it's uh, UV. Oh, oh, whoa, easy, easy. So mad. I wonder if that has to be told that it's, it's UV set one as well. And then this guy Okay, and then this is one. That's right. Moss, yeah. Moss AO height map. Yeah, this is uh, the Amplify Shader Editor. Some people actually on um, on the stream a while back were were asking about me streaming using this and stuff. So that's another good reason to be in here for a little while. But now I'm in debug mode because I don't understand. That is super weird. I'm just going to shrink this down like that. <laughs> They're sabotaging Unity on stream. Dude, it's a hack. It's a hack. Okay, so trim strip using two, using one. I wonder if Unity is only allowing one UV set right now in the way that I'm importing. Like if I, let me copy this and we'll delete it. Huh. Oh, I just realized what's going on here. Okay. Ah, that's, you didn't see that guys. <laughs> I changed the order of them. So the shader was looking at the wrong one. That should fix it. All right. Back to normals. Okay, now that we've got that, I need to just uh, go in here and map map these UVs. That's so funny. What's happening? I don't I don't understand. Can I just drag that into the? Oh yes, I can. Okay, so we'll take this. So see how I'm just kind of roughly putting the UVs where I think they would work. See, now they're kind of down there. Obviously, you get a harsh edge here, but uh, the blended normal should fix that. How did I fix it? So, so if you look at the UVs, it had UV0 and UV1, but UV1 was this, this set. What it needed to be is UV zero needed to be this. So I just needed to flip the names of these so that they were in the right order. So it was looking at it incorrectly. Okay, so now that that is, I wonder if this texture is gonna come through. Let's save it and see if it breaks stuff. It does break stuff, that's cool. Okay, so we need to delete that. No? Oh, did it like blow away the, eh, that's not cool. Okay. It's 
kind of working. Looks like it's looks like it's upside down. No, oh, that's right side up. Maybe the normal is upside down. Ooh, I hear monitors getting in trouble. <laughs> I hear him getting busted, guys. Yeah, that looks flipped. Okay, so let's go. One thing I really like about Unity is if I go into this normal and double click on it, it just brings it up in Photoshop. That's pretty, that's pretty slick. I have no idea if this is the right direction. Yeah. Interesting. So you can see that details down there, right? Um, let's, let's map another one just because Let's also see if we can get this to not uh, break when we. If I save, does it break it? Yes, it does. I have no idea why that happens. Uh oh. Is there any use to have to have second UV set if you use one for light map? I mean, there's always there's always reasons to have other UV sets, and you can have more than two. Uh, so what I'm doing is like I've got my zero to one on the first UV set or UV UV zero, and then UV one I'm like uniquely mapping um, like trim details. Uh, then I can make the light maps UV three. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, you just have to tell Unreal or Unity which UV set you're looking, you want it to look at for when you do light maps. Like if you wanted to, you could make the UVs of, uh, was it UV set um, zero, the very top one, you could make that one. If you wanted to, you could make that one uh, the light maps. I wonder if this will work. See, this is where you, this is where it gets a little janky. Like, if you wanted to do this type of stuff, like this, actually, let's not do that. You'd want to uh, make sure that you're mapping these in the correct direction, right? So, like, now these are going sideways, which is arguably is okay uh, but they have to line up this though that's actually more important than anything so if I put this over here let's see yeah so one of the downsides is I don't have control over where this mask propagates along the uh, the mask material but you almost don't need to I mean, that's kind of like, it's nice, but it's a little overkill as well. But uh, yeah, I actually really like this workflow because it allows for you to do a lot of detail work really quickly. I mean, those look awesome from back here. Uh, up close, they're looking okay. Also, that AO is like super blasted. Let's save that again. Now that it's plugged in correctly, there we go. But yeah, this is like super powerful. Uh, does this workflow have a specific name? Um, yeah, I think it's like, 
Man, now that now that you're asking for a specific name, I can't even remember. It's just like trim trim normal UV mapping. So it's like you've got a trim sheet. It's like trim sheet workflow. It's like you have a sheet that's got all of your trim patterns and stuff like that, and then you map on another UV set wherever you want those. How am I blending the normals? I am blending the normals with, um, it's in the shader. Oh, whoops, I actually have it on the other screen. Um, give me a second here. So I'm blending them with uh, this node called uh, blend normals. So what I've actually done is I have a, uh, a lerp between the stone and the moss normal. And then I've got a blend that blends in, uh, where are we at here? The unique normal to the asset. And then I've got, da, 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 da. then after that is the trim normal on top of that. So there's like multiple normals. Is it two, three, four? There's four normal maps in this thing. But you think about how much reuse, right? Is a two-way blend a built-in uni shader? Uh, ZZ2K, I have no idea, actually. I feel like this is being lit backwards. <laughs> like, my normals are flipped. Look at that blue channel. Hmm. Make sure here. See, this gets weird because I'm rotating the normals. I don't think that it knows what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Down here it looks right. Yeah, but once the uh, once the normals turn sideways, it gets kind of wonky. So those look all types are wrong. Anywho, that's uh, that's kind of how the trim stuff works. Ultimate trim, uh, Nate Master Flash, dude. That name, Master Flash. Uh, yeah. So um, ultimate trim, sure. There was a studio, I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, uh, that made a game that most of their environments were trim sheet work, which is freaking cool. So they didn't do any normal bakes, it was all trim sheets. So if they needed beveled corners, they could get all their chips and dings and stuff through a trim sheet. They did a, uh, a GDC talk on it as well. I'm sure someone in chat's gonna, yep, Sunset Overdrive. Nice job, guys, yeah. That's the one. I'm like, I'm sur sure someone in chat's, ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, so now that we've proven that out. Oh, I'm sure they're doing the same in Spider-Man. Dude, you save so much uh, texture memory. So Woogie, what's uh what's difficult about the trim sheets for you? Because all all they are is a zero to one space, or is, they're a UV space, right? Where everything's tiling left to right or up and down. It's usually left to right, and um, and then you're just using another UV set to map um, where the normals on that trim sheet show up, and that UV set is uh, usually separate from your other UV sets as far as like following stuff. 56 megabyte space requirement confirmed. <laughs> I didn't get to, I didn't say hi to you, Grub. How you doing? Anyways, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. 
Uh, as far as um, this workflow goes, I, I love it because it allows for some, like the resolution that I'm getting out of that is really nice. You've never done any trim sheets? So it's basically the same thing as making a wall that's tileable, right? Like if you got bricks here and then they tile here and you've got a pattern there and it tiles over here, um, you just connect them all the way across like this. Even a brick wall you could do it with. So if you have a brick wall texture that's tiling left or right, up and down as well, I guess, if it's just tiling, and then you're taking another UV set and mapping the, the UVs to line up with certain bricks. You're doing trim trim texturing or you're utilizing a texture in the similar form to trim sheets. So the next thing to do is to actually build I need a, can I, is there enough on deuce? No way. Sick. Uh, I need to build out the rest of those textures so that I can have trim sheets to just utilize. Oh, what do I do? I just need vertex on grid. Yeah, so I need to map this stuff out and then I should be good. Should be. Magic words. Yeah, it's really handy, especially for like objects that are really far away and they just have like big shapes. Cause then you just have to throw a tileable material on it and then another UV set and then map some, some trim normals to it and you're good. Okay, so yeah, see the bottom part here? That's super cool. You don't even have to know what those details are. Just the fact that you see little details down there is super nice. Graffiti, what's up, man? We just got the uh, trim normals working. So I'm gonna go in and uh, map the rest of these and create some others. I mean, I guess it doesn't even have to be that perfect, really. Like that, that normal gets the point across, right? So I don't really have to worry about this looking right. What, why? There we go. Oh, nice. Picking up scenes, man. That, that's a hard startup, but you got this. It's hard to always pick up a scene after you've put it down, you know? Dude, what's, what's really nice is now we've got this set up, so I can just start adding trim sheets, you know? So see, I pasted this one in. I could technically put this one here. I just need to make it just a little bit smaller so it fits inside of the...
Do you plan the trim sheets ahead of time? So I did in this one for the example of showing you guys kind of how it works. Um, but I think just making patterns and then just mapping them inside of a zero to one space tiling and you're good. You know? So see like these guys here, as long as I dupe this one Snap them over there. These will all tile. Question is, is can I get it to fit in the space? It's looking that way. That's crazy if that goes first try. What the hell? That's uh, <laughs> I am confused. So this one thing to keep in mind when you're doing these trim sheet stuff is make sure that it doesn't like come too far out because you're going to start getting some really weird normal information. Um, this might be okay because I'm going to put the trim behind it, but it's like the more it comes out like that, the more the geometry of the actual mesh that's being uh, mapped to should kind of follow that, that form. You know what I mean? Or else you're going to get some really weird like, it's flat, but it's not flat. See, like maybe I should... Maybe I should rotate this like this and then double check that it, that it still fits inside of the, like that. Whoops. Oh, that's going to. That might crash some shit. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know, just recalculate those normals for the uh, tessellated geometry or subdivided geometry. That means it's time to save. So I do need to put something behind it. Cleaning up the geo here. We don't need to triangulate that. I'll do that though. Any other rogue verts? No. All right.
has the has the pun for rogue verts ever been a, a thing during the creation of the division? No. That's a. It's pretty cheesy. I like it. Trying to just find a good background shape for this. It's pretty simple. Don't want too much detail. Probably bring this uh, all the way down as well. Something like that. Oh, that tells me we actually need to. Um, I still got that scene to finish to a level where I can get the crit be critted again. Oh yeah, dude. Do it. All right, so it looks like we've got another trim we can probably bake. What? I am confused. There we go, we'll do that. Wow, that's really weird. I don't know why that's a... Uh... Oh, I see, I actually deleted the... Uh... Look, there's even Unity uh, normals in here and Unreal normals. Let's see if one meter is enough. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, it gets really purple down there. Uh, let's make sure that this is linear. See how it looks. Eh. It looks so. See how, how extreme that curve is. It's probably bad. It's probably not gonna uh, translate well. But let's check it out. Try it down there just to see what it looks like.
What's coming through? That's the other thing is you can skew your UVs to get it to look a certain shape. Love that. So decals are done relatively in the same way, except for they're usually floating. Uh, well, and then there's another way to do decals where it's in the UV set as well. So, I mean, this is another way of uh, doing decals, I guess. Yeah, see, here's the downside as you start getting seams around along these edges here. It looks really weird as well, I think. There's always something to learn, man. Don't worry about it. Do I have enough on deuce? Oh my god. Yes. Yeah, see, like, UV-wise, I actually need to cut along this. So there's a little bit of geometry uh, madness you got to you gotta deal with if you want to, like, use the... See, that's so messy, too, because you get extra verse that you don't need. But see, now I can get a trim sheet that actually maps along this. Uh, nicely. See that? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. No. So see, because the UVs are, are clipped there, it allows me to do that. Technically, I think I could, um, yeah, this would have to be cut too. So what I'll do is this one, and this one. See what's happening? Ah, uh, so cool. Sure, there's a seam here too, but we don't care. You don't even notice it. Oh, I think those ones are flipped. Uh, kind of works. Seems about right. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, you can do it in Substance Designer as well. Like if you uh, if you made the patterns in Substance Designer, just make sure they tile left to right, and you're good. The English gentleman, what the heck? How you doing, man? I didn't even see uh, see your message. Hope you're doing well. Uh, John. John the Creator, McKenzie 3D. You just using Unity for testing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see if there were some new updates to the shader uh, thing that I bought for like its amplitude. Like, see how like that works so much better than having to like sit there and solve, like get this in like the high poly, you know? Pretty cool. Wonder where this one is. Ha. There's a little gap in there. You see that? Oh, that's that's going to bug me. Where is that at? Kind of fixed. There's some still some gaps in there, but whatever. Trying to steal some creativity. Sick. Sick. Yeah, we're just dinking around, trying trim trim stuff out. Fun. This stuff's really fun. Because you can just, you know, think think creatively instead of like technically. So we need to make a, a pattern that can go down this. This song's good. All right, I need to. I need to think here. I'm trying to think what else I need to. Um, I need to make a pattern that can go down this. And I think the way I have it mapped out in the uh, in the sheet is a little uh, it's particular. But now you guys have seen kind of how it works, so that's good. I wonder what happens if I do that. That'll actually probably look better because it's just a little bit flatter. Your head is confused? Yeah, so I'm just merging normals. So we've got the normal map for the, see this? So we've got the normal map, which one's this? So this is the baked normal. Man, look, there's like terrible gradients and stuff in there. Blech. Uh, that's the big normal map for the zero to one of this piece. Then we've got this one, which is the normal for the stone material that I'm tiling across the entire thing, blending those two together. And then using a mask, we're blending away this normal, super overpowered and strong, uh, of the moss utilizing this texture sheet which is uh, 
got like uh, a, a number of masks in it. So in the red channel, we've got a edge wear mask. In the green channel, look at these. <laughs> those are nice. These ones are great. Um, those are probably in hidden areas, so you don't even see them. Uh, green channel, I believe, is the moss mask. And then the blue channel is the mud or lower, lower ground contact mask. And then in the alpha, I put the AO. So those are all plugged in into their respective spots. And uh, where are we at here? The trim tile strip normal is map is blending on top of all of those, all of those normals. If we did it before the moss, the moss could actually, actually, I'm going to do that. So you can see there's moss kind of going on top of those normals and the normals are blending with it. If in the shader we did that on top of the moss before, the, if we blended it before the moss hits, then the moss normal should go on top. So this one, let me see here. So that's the normal. This is the moss. So moss comes in at this point. Let me make sure I'm, I'm reading this right. There's the moss on top of the stone. And then the normal for the entire thing. You could do this one before the normal on the entire thing. Let me do this in my brain really fast. Whoops. So, okay. Now this normal is happening before the, the primary normal. Uh, I got them from Substance Painter. So I did them myself, but they're just using a combination of sliders and, and mask generators. And then what I do is I just select all the layers with the masks. Oops, that one doesn't have a mask. So I've got three masks here and then I just export out. I need to set this up so that I can just export all of them packed, but right now I'm doing it manually in Photoshop. But there is a way. I don't think I wanna do this before the moss. Cause it's gonna get weird. I'm just gonna close that. But basically, it's changing the order of the of the mo or normal blending. Uh, what else we got here? Oh yeah, so see this dark stuff down here actually has a different roughness value compared to the stone. So like uh, that dark stuff is the mud mask. Then this, the edges, you see how the edges are kind of lighter? That's the, uh, the edge highlighting mask. Textures are stupid big right now. Um, let's see here. So the normal, the primary normal of this is a 2048, which that's, a, that's pretty hardcore. We can, uh, let's bring that down to a 1024. Um, and then let's let's start looking at all the other ones. Go seventy two. Thanks for the uh, follow, man. So Temple Stone is also a twenty forty eight. That's this tileable one. Probably doesn't need to be that high. That could probably be ten twenty four. Yeah, see how much like softer that got. Wah.
a little better. Uh, okay, let's go to the Moss Normal. So the Moss Normal is pretty high res as well. I think everything right now is 2048, so let's just down res everything. Let's see what Mo Moss looks like, 512. So if anything, keep your normals high. Your albedos can get really low without much notice. So let's do the... Uh, so I've made the albedo for the Moss uh, 512. But the Moss normal, we can keep that one at 2048. The reason it's so high res is because uh, if you were to like... Like if you were to do this normally, this would be crazy, right? But the fact that I'm using it, I would be using the moss on every asset that's got moss. Almost makes it okay. 2048 is still probably pretty, a little little high. That's what HD packs are for. Temple Stone, we can probably go to uh, 1024. Moss AO, <laughs> 1024. What's this one? Moss height. Yeah, that doesn't need to be that high. Normal. Material mask. So, materials. Bring this up. You need 4K Skyrim barrels in your life, and you know it. So these, I mean, they just don't need to be that high, but it's all good. See, now the other thing is I would probably keep the resolution of the trim, trim uh, normal, relatively high. What the hell is crunch compression? I have no idea what that is. I I want to uh, textures crunch compressed to save space. Ha! <laughs> Interesting. I that's probably a really rough compression. It just like <laughs> crushes everything down. 4K sweet rolls. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I bet uh, every texture going to mobile has got that shit checked. Okay, so these are all pretty low now. And then if we go into uh, the wall materials. So this is the normal for the overall mesh. Probably just keep this 2048. Why not? Why wow, you hardly notice that. All right, we'll leave that low. So see, I feel like you could make everything low and the tileable materials, you could just take their normals and just turn those up. It just looks so much nicer with those being high res. Oh, and I have it set to high quality. Shit. There we go. This one, 2048. Because the, the surface of the, the object is being portrayed by normals, right? And if the resolution of your tileable normals is really high res, then it, it just gives the illusion that the whole thing's really high res. Where you want your resolution most is probably in your normals and your masks when you're doing uh, materials like this. It is 854, guys. I got six minutes. Um, do you guys have anything you wanna ask or stuff like that? I'm gonna continue making this because we need to we need to finish making um, yeah making all these material strips. So we got to do this red one. We got another red one here. This arch one. Probably going to need to retexture that one in some way. And then this inside one. And then one, two, three, four other trims. Crush pression. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't call it that. You, you, you failed me.
this little tiny thin one probably keep that one really simple like a just a classic uh, classic trim I can do something like oops I see it's still not small enough that might just be a little too detailed but stuff like that because you can map that to you know whatever this is why you gotta make sure that your pieces are uh, not floating in help me help me have me compressed oh my god Uh, Woogie, is the, uh, is your low pot, is this in moto? Cause one, one thing you want to do when you're, when you're baking stuff, let's see here. So for example, we've got this mesh, right? Uh, whenever you've got a hard edge, no Maya. Okay. So whenever you've got a, like wherever your normal split, for example, so let's uh, like this. Let's find a good example. So up here, that's one UV island, right? Wherever those borders are, you need to make sure that those have a hard edge. Basically, have a hard edge wherever you want your your bakes to. Uh, like this is where you're gonna get those weird seams. If this edge is soft, but the if the UVs are split and the edge is soft, then there's going to be this weird gradient that occurs in there or like a break in the normal. So go ahead and just like, uh, what I do is I, I map all these out with the edges where I think I want them to be. And then I use this, uh, normal tool to, um, let's see here, select all the hard edges. So see those. So these are all the hard edges. And then I tell it to unwrap it based on those hard edges. Can you link? Yeah, blue. This song's dope. Your cage. Uh, yeah, post the image of it at least. Let me see if it like, because the image will usually tell you what's wrong. It's like the first uh, good troubleshoot. Damn, that's a nice feature. <laughs> okay, so normal problem. Viewport. Okay, so we've got we've got three edges. Soft edge display on. So this is coming in. Result baked normal. Smart, I am not sure. Uh, this, so these, hmm. I mean, that's a combination of it being, so this is viewport, soft edge display on. Yeah, these are really tight. I think it might have a lot to do with just the resolution of your bake. You can't Amaya 2018. Oh, thanks creatures. So it's only the lines you're worried about. I honestly, I think it's just too low res of a bake. What's telling me that is you're seeing a lot of stepping here. 
So you're seeing stepping here. There's just not enough resolution in order to try and achieve achieve that bake. What's the resolution of your texture? Are you following the Uncharted art style? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going off of an Uncharted concept. Two K. What? So if it's two K, why why is this look so low res? And what what is that? Like if this is that low res, there's no way it's 2K. Oh, you on the creator, dude, that's totally true as well. These, these bevels are really tight. You honestly probably don't need to bake those. Like you're totally allowed to have those type of bevels in your, in your low poly. If that part is low, then this should all be like the resolution difference between this and these it seems different. I don't know. So that's the high poly. Why why are these in the low poly? You know? Like I don't I I'm not I guess I don't know the context of this asset. Because, like, if these are in the low poly, you could just have those edges, like, a single edge there in order to get the shape for the silhouette. And then uh, have those in the high poly. Because that's another thing is your these edges are attempting to bend this flat normal. And that can also cause some issues sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little, that is irritating. That's where you slot your money in. Oh, yeah, a quarter facing forward and then it slides down. Man, I wouldn't even, hmm, I wouldn't even worry about that stuff if it's that small. Just don't even have these on there. If those details need to be on there, you can put them on your high poly and then they don't even have to be modeled on this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what's causing that though. Anywho, okay, I have to get out of here. I am so sorry that I'm leaving you, like, without an answer. Brr. But uh, keep the chat going in uh, Discord. So just have it beveled? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would build those those edges in the high poly and then just bake it to your low poly. I wouldn't even try and put those edges in the low poly if it's if it's especially if it's small. If it's small on your on your model, then you don't even need to worry about it really. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully this is uh, informative. This is kind of like the end of like explaining how the trim stuff works now that I've got some patterns. Um but yeah, we'll finish up the patterns throughout the next week and then we'll start mapping all that stuff. Oh, thanks creatures. That moss is, uh, that moss is crazy up close, but I like how, how it looks from far away. Rip, rip. Pathing, thanks for the follow, man. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I will uh, see you guys later. Have a good productive week, and I will see you on Friday. We got two portfolio reviews lined up and uh, some critiques from you guys. Join the Discord, and uh, there there is a 
channel where you can post on the day we're doing critiques and you can get yourself critiqued as well. Anyways, cool. And say hi to Josh if you see him in there. Josh Lynch Runes. All right, later, guys.